Hello Scorpio, this is your April 2022 monthly creative energy forecast. This is Into the Infinite. I'm Charlie and I'm so grateful that you're here. So a lot is happening this month. Uh, we have the new moon in Aries on April 1st, which is a great time to kind of, um, I, I heard strike out on your own and that made zero sense given the, I, but this I'm channeling, so it makes not much sense to me, but for you, you might be like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I need to do. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but this is a great time for new beginnings and a sense of adventure that you might be bringing to um, some things that you're working on uh, in terms of projects. And I guess the way that you're feeling about them, I'm hearing too. Um, but there's a certain way that you've been approaching um, projects. And I'm getting that it may, you recognize that it may not have been working. Just a small thing. That's for somebody that's very specific. Um you may recognize that there are things that you haven't been stepping into that you need to, uh, and this new beginnings, so that it's sort of the theme of new moons is that new beginnings. Um, and I think that, uh, it's a good time to step into that and to really, um, integrate that wisdom into your energy Scorpio at this Aries full moon or new moon, sorry. Um, and in this Aries energy too, you, you might find that your emotions are a bit like, I'm hearing that your emotions are fired up and that you're just like, you're quick you're quick to judge, you're quick to, and not judge as in judge others harshly. I'm talking about quick to assess situations instead of letting it play out and just observing. Observe, don't absorb, right? Like you're pulling back and going, whoa, 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 hang on a second. I need to just pull back and step back and then and then move forward and then approach. Um, so that may be something that uh, you're balancing with this Libra full moon and perhaps intentions that you're setting around being uh, in situations and releasing these, releasing these intentions so that you know you can draw them towards you. Um, I think it is a, um, it is a balancing period where you're starting to understand. Uh, and then, so the Aries full moon, it, new moon, ugh, I really want to say Aries full moon. So maybe there is something to be said for the um, cycle that is happening between this set of new and full moons, and then the set of uh, you know, Aries new moon and Libra full moon, and then the next set of um, Aries full moon and Libra new moon. So that could be for somebody. Um, so the what I'm getting is that there's a way that you're going to need to balance your expectations of other people and what how other people respond to the way that you are when you do work. And that means just I'm getting this very, um, this sort of... Um, so the Scorpios that I know have, uh, they're very honest, but they're very fair, right? And this is more Libra energy, which may seem strange, but the ones that I know, they're very wise and their intuition is razor sharp. They're also very aware emotionally. The shadow parts of the signs can come through as well, but for the most part, there, there's a lot of wisdom um, in the Scorpios that I know. And what I'm getting is that the way that you approach projects may seem unfamiliar to other people. Uh, it may seem strange because they're not used to feeling their way through a project. They may not be used to intuiting their way through work. They may not be accustomed to thinking their way through um, elements of projects that they're working on. So this may seem strange to other people, but you just kind of have to um, strike out on your own really and like blaze your own trail and and not be fearful of looking silly right the the hermit with the wisdom that he carries doesn't hold that torch and go what do other people think of me am I holding it the right way is this the right color light should I make it a little warmer do you think that this is the perfect thing I should have got that other you know encasing for this light at home sense I just I really should have damn it the hermit doesn't say that shit the hermit's busy being the hermit right? That's, that's the energy that you need to embody. And this could be uh, intentions that you set uh, in the Virgo full moon, because the Hermit card is the Virgo card. And that's what's popping to mind. And it could have to do with the sixth house as well. So that's Virgo's kind of territory in the chart. Um, but I'm, I'm really getting that. Um, and Virgo is Mercury too. So this could be, again, this communicating the way that people, they're, they're maybe just not familiar with the way that you operate and that's okay. And it could be that you're striking out on your own in this uh, Aries energy and then the Aries new moon. You could be doing work for yourself. You could be uh, moving into doing work for you that is pulling you away from jobs 
uh, in good ways, right? Like you're moving, 444 just came up on the time. You're moving into um, your own business and your own work in ways that honor and respect your energy. And maybe others weren't able to do that because not because of a lack in them, because their, their awareness and their consciousness, it's not about being more developed than other people. It's just a different places, right? So if you operate in projects and work in one way, and then other people don't or do, um, what ends up happening is it can be a clash where it's like this, you're, you're like butting heads. And what's actually happening is, um, it's just two different ways of doing things with the intention to get the same outcome. So sometimes instead of just being able to recognize that we're all doing things differently, uh, in the best way that we can for the best outcome that we want and know and hope for, uh, we end up getting into this place where we spin a little bit. We end up spinning in this place of, well, if they don't like the way that I do things or they don't value the way that I do things, it must mean that it's wrong. No, it just means that it's really unfamiliar to them. And that's okay. You have to let that go. And this is why a lot of people end up going into business for themselves, even if it's just a side hustle, right? It's meaningful. It's fulfilling. It's like the uh, 555. It's change. It's the change that they want to see. Instead of going into this lower vibration of when is it going to come to me? Five of Pentacles. Uh, hello, I'm outside the church. I'm banging the door. I have all my jacket on. I just want to come inside. You're like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that may be locked. That door may be locked, but there is one across the street. There's one down the road a little bit and I can walk to all of those places. I can get to all of those places. So it's really about doing that, right? It's about that mentality. Um, and I, I'm hearing it's not either or, it's both and. So I don't know if someone needs to hear that, um, but that I'm going to leave there. But also, uh, so... <laughs> Oh, spirit. I hear I am being like, I'm done. Spirit's like, mm, are you sure? <laughs> uh, I'm hearing um, templates and that templates can be related to beliefs that you have, energetic templates, etheric templates, things that you're reprogramming about what you came here to experience versus what you came here knowing. Oof, that's for somebody. That's really deep. Scorpio. I mean, that's, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, your eighth house, your transformation. Why aren't you stepping into that? Lean into that. You don't have to be the fire. You don't have to set people on fire to keep yourself, to, you don't have to set yourself on fire to keep people warm. That's a quote from somewhere, maybe. Um, but I'm getting that you're, there's this conflict that's been happening where you know what you came here to do and offer, but you also had to experience all of these things along the way in order to do that well. And this in-between time has really screwed with you um, and not screwed with you, like messed around. It's just sort of, it. there's a template that you have to let go of and remove. Um, and it could be in Taurus season, you're going to find that you will be inclined to move towards one that's more comfortable. Um, but there's like a template in programming that you're sort of shifting and moving around here. And that's an alchemy card or alchemy card. I, cause I got, <laughs> um, I had the image of, uh, the temperance card with the cups moving back and forth. So, um, we're going to dive into your reading Scorpio. I think, yes. Okay. <laughs> Spirit's like, I'm done. I'm good. Uh, okay. So I invite, I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space and I ask that it is a safe space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay. I'm excited, Scorpio. Are you? <laughs> Are you? Are you? So, Spirit, can you please give me messages for my Scorpios for April 2022, please? And thank you very, very much. Uh, this deck is the Muse Tarot by Chris Ann. I absolutely love this deck. It helps me to read intuitively, which I do. So as a side note, uh, this is first and foremost, this is general reading. Uh, not all messages are going to resonate. It could be a sentence or two or three, um, but... Uh, this is a general reading and I read the cards intuitively. So I don't read reversals, but if they come out in reverse, I will read that uh, off the cards, um, which I, I have before quite a few times. Um, and yeah, the images on this deck are quite beautiful and very evocative in terms of uh, the creative energy that I'm, you know, I'm tapping into when I do this for my creative collective. That's all of you. So Spirit, can you please give me messages for my wonderful creative collective? Please and thank you for Scorpio. Ooh, we're feeling fancy, feeling like emperors, are we? 
<laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Page of Wands. I, I lay out the spread and then I um, sort of let spirit speak to me a bit about it. And oh, there's two. You get a two for one. How nice. How lovely. Um, I let spirit speak to me a little bit and then I clarify. Um, so spirit, can you please give me just a few more messages to round out this reading for Scorpio, please. And thank you for April, 2022. The moon. Page of swords and two of swords. Decisions, decisions is what I'm hearing. So I think that you're in a pretty good position at the start of this month. You're feeling like you're, you know, the Aries energy for the Scorpio who listens to this or who, for whom this resonates, um, you're really in this fire energy. Uh, you're, you're finding the Aries energy really useful, um, in terms of activating projects and helping you to feel, uh, like the emperor. Now the emperor is sort of the integration of all of the king suits, right? So clarity with the, you know, swords is clarity. So you're very clear about what you want and where you're headed. Uh, wands, you're channeling that inspiration positively into pentacles energy of the king. There's, which is uh, stability, which is something that you really value, which is something that's coming to fruition really beautifully. Moving forward slowly, but uh, informed by cups energy as well, which is somewhat uh, of more flowing energy. And it is something that is emotionally fulfilling to you too. So this is like, you, this is you um, in a great position position this month. And this could be you launching that business, right? Emperor energy is a business owner. So, you know, per the first part of this, the, the channel part for the moons and the um, navigating the energy of April, this could be you launching a business or starting a business or starting something on your own. Even if it's just a contract thing or freelance work, you're really stepping into this powerfully. Um, and you're using your gifts in, in ways that, um, inspiration isn't just knocking it beat down the whole freaking door is what I just heard what <laughs> Scorpio that's beautiful and I apologize my voice might squeak a couple times the tea is doing its job beautifully um uh, I'm in I'm living my best you know teenage vocal box <laughs> life so forgive that um I'm leaning into it and I hope that you do as well so page of uh page of wands here is I think that these like you're feeling really inspired and there are so many ideas coming to you I think it's going to be really good to ground that energy it's going to be really good to ground that energy I think that you're almost afraid of sort of being run these ideas running away with you and that making you lose momentum and I think that it may have happened before uh, but I think that if you ground this energy uh, throughout the month and into Taurus season and really using Taurus uh, energy to draw you in, I just heard, to draw you in, um, it's going to make it really, uh, it's going to ease these fears, right? Um, I have ADHD. I get this, right? This is, this can be prominent. And what I sometimes do is I, I have a notebook, uh, well, hundreds really over time, um, probably thousands at this point. Um, but I write down ideas as they come to me so that I don't feel stressed. Like I'm, I might miss out on something. I'm almost getting like the chariot in reverse here. Um, like you, there's like a stress that things are just going to run away with you and you, you won't be able to handle it all either. Uh, but that's not true. That's not true. Um, that's not true because you're showing up as the emperor. And that was an upright read from this card. So you're showing up as the emperor at the beginning of like, th this is the energy you're entering the month with. And I think that you're going to do just fine, provided that you stay out of your head provided that you stay out of your head. Yeah, the moon clarifying this. So don't be taken to the illusions that you've, there are ways that you've seen the work that you've done in the past. My frustration just comes with the fact that I get messages really quickly and I'm trying to channel them all. And um, it's not with this reading at all. Um, there are ways that you thought of yourself relative to your capability and capacity to do projects before. I'm hearing stick to itiveness. So it could be that you didn't really feel like you were, um, it could be that you didn't really feel like you had it, had what it took, or, you know, you had all of these, these strengths and things like that, but you would often get caught in the unseen things or you would get caught. I'm, 
I'm almost hearing that like you would get caught in your head, but you would also get caught in your intuition. So this could be about energy management as well and transmuting things. You know, every night I ask Archangel Michael to come in and to clear my aura and to clear the places in my aura where I benefited from negative energy attaching right? And I have to do that every night. I do that when I go to work. I do that in the parking lot before. I do that afterwards. Um, it's a constant process, right? And when you're in a place where you're listening to your intuition and you're also moving forward on projects, it's not a have to do, it's a want to do because it just feels good. You can feel the shift. So for some reason that is that came out as an aside for somebody. Um, but there's this uh, this sort of jumping out on your own. Like, I'm really excited for this for you, Scorpio. This is great. And you have such wonderful nurturing energy. And the thing is that some people nurture in effusive ways that seems inauthentic. But the way that you do it, that from this reading here, what I'm getting is that the way you do it is so connected to intuition and to what other people truly need. Um, like, you listen to what other people are needing and you respond. You don't just assume. And that's the subtle difference between... Um, you know, emperor energy and um, like page energy, right? So that's going to serve you really well for whatever you're working on. I feel like it might be artistic. Uh, the reason why I'm getting artistic is just this, there's a lot of ideas coming to you and it's sort of like this rainbow array of them. Um, that could be literal art, but it could just be that there's this artistic way. This is like an art. You're doing something that feels like an art to you. You're so good at it that it's like, it is, uh, it strikes other people as being like, they can't imagine you not doing it, right? When I came out as trans and I started to transition, uh, quite a number of people said, um, I, you know, I can't picture you as having a name, anything other than what you do now, right? I can't picture you as anyone other than you are right now because it's just you. This is the most you that you've ever been. And I feel like people are going to say that about you when you start to do this and you're on this journey and you take that step forward, but you can't doubt yourself. You can't doubt yourself. No. You can't doubt yourself. There's something I'm seeing here too. Uh, this is related to solar plexus energy and really starting to understand and work with the energy that you carry in you, within you. Um, if your energy is calloused uh, and in any way, it'll show up, but it'll also reflect an imbalance between the front and back of the chakras and the way the energy flows between there. 17, 17 just showed up on the time. Um, so there's something really important there um, that your solar plexus energy may have been calloused in the past. <sighs> okay, spirit, what else you got for me? Can you please continue to clarify this? Uh, where my wonderful Scorpio are starting here. Starting the month. Thank you so much. Ten of pentacles. Yeah. I feel like you have... So a lot of this stuff has happened under the surface. Some people, i feeling like uh, tower energy right now uh, tower or the minor arcana reflections of it in the eight of wands or the um do 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 think 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 eight of wands or the um uh seven of swords the ten of wands like those kinds of like ugh, energies i feel like people may not people may think that this is something that's new to you or different very different um, but it's really, you've, this has been working under the surface the whole time. Like this is what really matters to you. So again, don't doubt yourself. Do not doubt yourself. Yeah. Don't doubt yourself. Mm. That shit doesn't work. Yeah. They want us to come in. Okay. This is very, these cards are very like choppy now. Um, oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, don't doubt yourself. This is a lot of like, I think that this is part of a bigger, a bigger cycle for you that you've been having to work through. Um, and the, uh, wheel of fortune is the, um, uh, Jupiter card. So I think that this is something, this is going to be, um, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing what you focus on expands. My third eye spot is, is annoying me right now. Um, it's like itching, but it also hurts. Oof. So, um, I think that this is part of a cycle that has been bothering you for a long time. You felt quite frustrated by it because you know what to do and then you get started and then 
it just stops, right? And then people wonder what happened and you can't really articulate to them why, because how do you say to somebody, well, I feel like I couldn't do it. And then I needed you to tell me X, Y, and Z thing for me to know uh, what I needed to do next. And then, so I think that this is starting to, uh, this is beginning a new cycle um, of looking inward. Yeah, see, eight of wands and balancing, right? That's amazing. That's exactly, yeah. Thank you so much, Spirit, for that confirmation. It's really, this is going to be shocking to people, but it's not, uh, it's not your job to balance their expectations. Mm -mm. Nope, it's not. And you're, I, I feel like this is something that is coming to an end for you, but this is part of something that's been a long-standing cycle. Um, it's been a long-standing cycle where you've kind of catered to, to other people's needs, even when you're launching stuff. And right, we go through different selfish periods in our lives. Um, and I went through this in grad school. I went through this in grad school where you have to be more selfish when you're doing a master's program or a PhD because you don't have time for anything else, right? So I think that it's okay for you to invest time, put the time in and don't feel like it's wasted because you're spending it on yourself. You're worth it. Oof, Scorpio, I want to give you a hug right now. Um, if you haven't felt like you're worth it, if you haven't felt like your inspiration is something you've wanted to pursue, the seven of pentacles is showing up in reverse and my third eye is going crazy again. Oh, um, this is, this is worth it. You know, inspiration doesn't always lead you astray. Sometimes inspiration takes you exactly where you've needed to be this whole time. And if you haven't been listening and you don't feel like you are worth it, um, it will not get you very far in the end anyway, right? It's like an approach to work that you have to let go of. Yeah, it's, I think that you will, yeah, you, you will succeed. You may not think it, you may not think that it's success or other people may not think, uh, they may try to convince you that it's not like, you may feel like you're, you're getting away with something like focusing on you makes you feel like you're really stealing and like you're taking things from other people, but in the end, you're just honoring your inspiration and that's, what's going to make you the most successful. That's, what's going to, uh, push you forward. Um, and I think if you, yeah, see this, yeah, there's a lot of this, eh? Like you, it's, I feel like there's a Scorpio that really does not feel like they can step into their power. Like they can't do it because they're going to hurt other people around them. But it's, it's okay to do that. Like this, this is very inward facing um, energy. Like, yeah, the sun, the sun, it's worth it. Scorpio, Scorpio, there's, you're, you're okay. You're okay. You know, like. It's okay to do things for you. And if you don't feel comfortable starting a whole damn business this month, you can even just use that energy. If it's something that you're planning to do or that you want to do, you can use that April 1st new moon uh, in Aries as a way to step into the energy that's going to allow you to move forward in your eight of wands energy, um, you know, in your joy, in your joy, right? Because this project, what you're working on and what you want to work on will be successful, um, I think that it just, it takes time to nurture things. And when it takes time to nurture things, it also means that you have to nurture you in that same period of time too. You have to put in the energy to be nurturing yourself and things that are important to you. But if you don't think that you're worth it, how the hell can the universe think that, right? How can the universe respond to you? Because even if, <clears throat> even if it's a small opportunity that's come your way, you may not be able to recognize it because you're waiting for fireworks. You're waiting for fireworks, right? Or fireworks are happening, but because you're looking at what's not working, you can't see them. You can't see the inspiration that's coming to you. So staying in a higher vibe and focusing just bit by bit, little piece by little piece on, um, even if you don't have the next step, uh, in terms of the next biggest thing to do, sometimes all you need to know is the next biggest way that you want to feel. And that's the energy to step into. That's the momentum forward that you need. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. Knowing how you want to feel, Scorpio, that's all you need right now. And I think that that, that is what is going to be bringing in messages in, um, you know, from other people, offers to work with one another. Uh, the contracts card that I read, it could be contracts in terms of relationships or soul contracts, that kind of thing. The wheel is here. Uh, we, yeah, the wheel of fortune is here. So if the four of uh, wands comes out, which I get that energy off of this, uh, I'm reading that it's really... 
uh, if that happens, then I will for sure know that this is about soul contracts coming to fruition uh, that are really freeing you from this need to um, be at other people's beck and call. Oof. That's a really, uh, it's not like the worst energy ever, but I feel like it's really draining, right? That would make anyone doubt that they could handle everything coming at them because and the other thing to keep in mind too is that people don't do this consciously all the time but sometimes people are very comfortable with you being in a specific place because it makes you specifically available to them in a very uh, specific way right so it's not about um it's not about them trying to hold you down it's just because people get comfortable right people get comfortable with the ways that you've been available to them so they benefit when you doubt yourself and that is something to keep, yeah they benefit when you doubt yourself don't doubt yourself I feel like I need to name this reading, don't doubt yourself. And like, you could probably turn like, I, I don't know, it, like the higher octave of a drinking game would be like a wheatgrass shot or something. <laughs> For the number of times that I say, don't doubt yourself in this reading, Scorpio. <laughs> so yeah, the world, like I said, it's something that's coming to a conclusion and there's happiness on the other side of it. There's fulfillment on the other side of it. Um, I think that this fear is keeping you stuck though. This fear is keeping you stuck. Very stuck. Follow your inspiration. Follow your inspiration. Because that's how you stay connected to you. That The energy that you begin with. That's how you stay connected to you right now, Scorpio. People always have opinions. Yeah, I see the hermit. That's People always have opinions. They have so many things to offer, but how much of it is actual wisdom that they're giving you and how much of it is what they have experienced in their own life is important. It doesn't mean you have to share the same values. Spirit, can I get some clarity here? So I feel like you're kind of, you are hiding um, a bit. So you're sort of this, it's easy for you to, it's almost like pretending that you don't know. Oof pretending that you don't know that's what i got here and this could be the april 16th uh full moon in libra that this is referencing where you're going to realize or you could um yeah i feel like the energy is going to activate a way that you recognize that you've been like it's almost like pretending because pretending makes you available to people pretending that you don't know means that you don't have to step outside of a comfort zone of being the everything to everyone and what that does is it makes you useful, but it doesn't place you in service to what you actually want, right? Progress, like just blah, blah, blah. the output of energy does not mean momentum forward, right? The output of energy does not mean momentum forward. Just an FYI. Yeah, it doesn't mean momentum forward. And you're, it's like you're pretending that you don't know. There's two swords that this person's hanging on to and they would not have the blindfold on if they put the fucking swords down. Sorry for cussing so much. Um, I, mm, yeah, uh, I know my granny's pretty close to Scorpio season. Uh, so if anyone shows her this, sorry, granny. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that it's stop pretending. That's the stop pretending. Stop pretending um, because you do know the Empress wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if the Empress came out here. You do know because it's, are you fucking kidding me? You do know. You know, Scorpio. <laughs> it's really, you're just over it and it's okay. Stop pretending because it's just going to get better from there and it will help you move forward. Holy crap. <sighs> yeah. When you start to put stuff down, when you recognize that you don't need to, and sometimes we pretend because it means that other people can help us because that helps them feel important. And that's the only way that we can relate to some people because that's just a pattern that we've been in. It's a pattern that we've been in. So when people can only relate to us from our place of confusion, they may seem or feel like they have nothing to offer. I had a friendship end because I went to grad school and he didn't talk to me about how you know, I adored him. He was my best friend at one point and I was his from what he told me. And it started to devolve into this really awful stuff where it was like, I did, I do so much for you and you don't do this for me. And it's, it was like, there was no communication about dissatisfaction. And I think that he was worried about feeling left behind and wasn't communicating that to me. Um, and I wasn't leaving him behind at all. There was no sense of that, but it's almost like 
he only felt useful in the context of being able to help me. And it wasn't great because then it's like, well, if you're only, you know, if you only want to get to know me because um, you can give me advice and do all this stuff for me, what happens when I'm strong enough to stand on my own two feet? What happens when I'm strong enough to, you know, do X, Y, and Z thing? And he did help me through some very, very toxic relationships. And, um, you know, he was a phenomenal human being. It just got to be a bit different. And, you know, our paths were like this, and then they just went like this, which happens, right? There's no charge to it. Um, he was, he was, and is a very tender hearted, kind human being. He's a cancer, right? That's his energy. Um, but sometimes when, when we pretend, um, I didn't pretend and I, and the, the friendship left my life. Right. So there could be this fear that you have of ceasing to pretend and things will leave your life. But what I'm seeing is that if there's things that leave, right, the only thing that's leaving is like, dead weight and anxiety he was not dead weight so that's not i'm not talking about classifying people as that i'm talking about dead weight in terms of like things that aren't serving you right this is almost like ace of wands reversed energy is what i'm getting off of this right like it's inspiration that can't reach you because you're you know it's it's uh, movement forward that is steady and reliable and sure that can't reach you because um you're in this place of like, I, well, if I, I can't do this, because if I do, then they won't, you know, there may be people relying on you. And if you have kids, that's a different story. I get that. Like I've, I've dated plenty of people with kids to know that like, that's, they come first all the time. And that's a totally different story. I'm talking about, there's like a way of being in relation to others um, that has forced you to almost pretend to not know or pretend to not care, but you really do care. And once you start to put things down, it's almost like, like, rock and roll right like um i'm i'm hearing uh the revving of an engine like you're you're ready to go like spirit is like ready to go got it and you get all the downloads you get the information you need um you it's all there like bam 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 and this could be um something to do with the past like judgment is past energy uh it, the lower uh the lower geez the minor arcana reflection of it is in the six of cups and that can be like past life energy that can be past energy um and judgment is also Pluto. So this is like a transformative lesson. And the, the chariot is cancer energy. So it's interesting. I didn't make that connection until just now that it was the can the friend who was uh, a cancer that I had this experience with. So it could be that you're, this is in relation to a cancer. Um, but this is mostly just to me about forward movement when you realize this. Forward movement when you realize this. And it's, you don't have to hide in not knowing. You If you know, stand in that knowing. If people are threatened by that, it's you you have to let go of the need to be liked you have to let go of the need to be um appreciated in the way that you know it, it's almost like we create these expectations of others uh because we don't want to do the work to feather our own nest right like i there's nothing that i love more on a cool winter or uh, winter a uh, cool fall evening um, when the temperature starts to dip like below 10 and it's, you know, you've had a hot, hot summer and the weather's nice and you just curl up underneath a duvet at night before bed and you read, right? I'm very, um, as you can tell, I'm such a partier. <laughs> um, but that feeling, right? That feeling of sort of going inward in that comfort. What comes to mind is that there, you have to find the place in you where you get that, you you feather your nest in that way. You channel that comfort for yourself. People's opinions are so fickle. And the reason why they're so fickle is because they're related on everything that they're going to at that exact moment in time. It has nothing to do with you ever, never. Like there are times where if you hurt someone, then yes. Or if you're like interpersonally tangling, 3333 three, 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 I'm seeing is on the time now. Um, but if you're if you're intermingling in that way fine but usually it's just that that reflects where they're vibrating at at that time right um so you can't blame yourself or feel like their opinions are your problem um because if you think that way then they become your problem um i i see though that others like it's this whole process is giving you a, a lot of clarity and i think it's going to help you move forward into the emperor energy here yeah you're manifesting like you're manifesting not just a door like you're manifesting a whole fucking park like you're I, the, there's a lot of manifestation energy here the reason why i say that is because i see the moon uh twice um did i see it i swear i saw it twice dun, 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 dun. yeah the moon was twice here, which tells me that there's a lot going on underneath the surface. And when that happens and the magician shows up to me, that communicates that there's 
um, forward movement, uh, but it's not like, it's almost like that overnight success where people are like, oh, this person's been doing this and blah, blah, blah. They just had all this success and luck overnight. And it's actually been like years that they've been working on something, but no one gave a shit. <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden everyone gives a shit because the internet is a beautiful way uh, for that kind of platform and that kind of thing. Um, but this, uh, I, I think that this is going to bring in offers. This is going to bring in offers, but you got to stay confident and in your own power. You have to stay confident and in your own power. The temptation will be to be confused, right? Two of swords. You've got the two of swords here too. So the temptation will be to the devil energy, right? The temptation will be to fall back into that pattern, but you don't need it. You do not need to pretend that you don't know because you do. You really, really do. Um, and it's, it's okay if that's a pattern you fell into, because then we can feel like stupid for needing that pattern. But it could have been that that protected you at one time, right? That could be the, the inner, the relationship you had with your inner critic that protected your inner child. So that's three, five, three, five on the time. That could be something to see with a little bit more compassion, right? And I almost feel like that's, that's accurate. Yeah, that's accurate because there's this like inner child, right? That's, you know, it was probably a good way to think of it is it was a bridge to get you from where you were to where you needed to be. Was it perfect? No. Was it every, was it the best way to go about it? There might've been other ways, but it's the way that you did it. And what matters is that you make peace with it because you're manifesting something completely different and new, right? You're manifesting something new. And that's the freaking truth. And that's good. You're, you're manifesting something new. That's the truth. I'm putting that there. Um, that's the absolute truth. And I think that you're helping others um, by offering by offering what it is that you're here to do with this emperor energy. You're, you're offering of yourself. And that's really in the towers here, of course. That's coming out too. <sighs> you're here to offer of your energy. I sigh just because there's so much energy going through. And I'm just like, damn, like spirit is like, there's, there's a lot that's moving here. Um, it's not you, my dear Scorpio. If anything, I'm, I'm cheering you on. This is amazing. This is excellent energy because it means that you're really, you're, you're stepping into your power in a way that is quite incredible. Um, there are a lot of uh, minor arcana, but then the major arcana, it's almost like they start showing up right about here <laughs> and then there's more, right? Um, so I think, well, there's some here too. So it's spread throughout, but there's a lot of big changes taking place. A lot of big changes taking place. And between these two things, I think that what's going to, the ways that other people are going to help you is they're, they may just be showing you this pattern. They may be showing you this pattern and that you don't have to carry it anymore, which is a real sense. Like it's justice in a way that isn't, uh, it doesn't shout. <laughs> it doesn't shout. It's just the cause and effect of things, right? So sitting in that energy, instead of saying like, oh, this was a karmic test. Well, no, it's just, a, it's, it's a, it's, a cosmic test? Did I say cosmic test? Maybe, I don't know. Um, I tend to think of this as more so um, cause and effect, right? If there's a specific cause, how? what do you want the effect to be? You get to choose that after a certain time when you're conscious of your behavior and you're conscious of patterns, you're conscious of the ways that people have related to you, you get to choose. That's the ultimate effect. And then that sets off a new chain of events of cause and effect because you're standing in a different place of power. We think of when I hear karmic tests on um, YouTube readings, I sometimes think it's it's it can feel like it's coming from it's coming from the heavens down to you. Like it's it, but it's really not like that. Um, I don't, uh, what just went through it. Spirit is funny. It's, I just heard spirit say um, best said as James Earl Jones. So <laughs> coming down from the anyway. Um, I think that there's a lot of knowledge that you have, but you haven't been standing, you haven't been letting it shine. You haven't been in your Leo and you really need to be, right? You may feel like you have to fight for it. You may feel like you have to fight for it, but you know, the reality is you can just, you can just lean into it. You can just be, you can just be, this is all you have to carry, right? You don't have to carry the 10 of wands. You don't have to carry all that stuff. And I think that this sense of justice is just going to happen naturally. It's not, you know, no one's going to come in swinging a sword, like, you know, Mike, Archangel Michael cutting cords and all this stuff. No, it's just the justice is in who you're choosing to be now. The new cause and effect that you're choosing. Um, 
And I think that um, there is a break that it's going to cause. There is a break with other people that it's going to cause, but you understand that this is for your best good. Jeez, there's so many moving away cards. Okay, okay. Thanks, Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the 400 cards. <laughs> there's a break with other people. So this sort of splits into two here. So what I'm seeing is that there's a truth here in, in stepping into your power and um, releasing the need to be confused about something related to this project or work that you're doing or relationship. And when you do, it's like the tower causes this break, but you're the tower causes this break with a situation or people or things. I'm holding up too many at once. I know uh, it causes a break with people, right? There's a breaking point that you reach and you're like, no, I'm just, I'm no, the, my, my path is my path and I'm walking away from conflict. And when you gain an understanding of that, you're just, you're moving on, right? You're moving on. You don't need the conflict. The conflict is like, it's almost like it knocks in between spiritual, um, between your awareness of the spiritual path and your actual moving towards it, right? Like there's this conflict that shows up in between that's like, hey, 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 hey. Like it, it's like poking you. Like, hey, 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 hey. We used to be friends. Hey, hey. We used to interact this way. Hey. And, and it's like trying to get your attention, but you don't have to give in. And I think that's where the split with other people is going to happen. And this can represent, I don't see enough um, like, cups energy here to represent the break in a relationship this could just be a break in terms of how you're doing things but given the five of wands it could be projects that you're just like no I don't want to do that anymore because you're, you understand you're clear and then what happens when you get clear and you stand in that understanding what happens that sorry it was like this um you move away but look at this beautiful energy coming in queen of pentacles two of cups and empress like holy to like that's amazing that's amazing because that's love, that's fulfillment, that's partnership, that's soulmate energy coming in. That's the stuff that's going to stick around. That's the stuff that's not going to ask you to do, be, or have everything that another person lacks because they show up, what? Complete and whole. Complete and whole. Two people showing up that are complete and whole on their own and able to give from a full cup. None of this half cup bullshit, right? And I think that when you stop to... When you, when you cease to rely on the need to relate to other people from a place of letting them help you, obviously let people help you. I'm not talking about partnership. What I'm talking about is like when you recognize that some people are only able to help you and do certain things by meeting you in certain places, you can do that without entering into the vibration of that thing. What do I mean? Well, um, if you have a friend that you can only, and I'm using this as an example, this is not true for my life or anything, um, but if you have a friend that can only, um, eat certain foods because of food allergies, okay. I have food allergies, not many. I just like wheat and, um, milk are a problem. Um, but if you have food allergies and you have a friend that really, really, really likes to go get pizza, for example. Okay. Um, you're not going to want to go to get pizza with that friend. Um, if, they can't eat it or it makes them sick. If, but if you're not like, if, if you, why would you put yourself into a position where you would react and respond to foods and have allergic reactions, knowing that that's going to cause an, uh, an allergic reaction. And there could be internal, like energetic allergic reactions that you have, but it's like, you're, you're not listening to it because it's not as pronounced as something like a, a wheat intolerance or a lactose intolerance. Right. So you can't sit in these energies necessarily um but you do anyway right so it's really about being clear it's about being clear and following your inspiration anyway uh releasing the need to to be that sort of nurturing force to people because sometimes you know one of the core human needs that we all have is to know that we're wanted and needed right but at some points you have to ask yourself at what cost at what cost are we allowing people to be needed and at what energy level and vibration are we stepping into with that um are we lowering our vibration or are we really valuing ourselves? and i think this is a, a situation of um finding either love or projects that resonate because you're all pe all parties at the table are coming forward with full cups like there's a difference it's, there, there's also like if this was a relationship this could be a difference in incomes right like the empress is like upper millionaire and the queen of pentacles might comparatively be like upper middle class or something like that Ugh, i hate to think in terms of classes like that that's gross 
Um, but I mean, like, it's not about hating money. It's just that the classism that can go be associated with that. But I'm talking about like, when you find the, the right partnerships in work and creative projects, and I'm not talking about um, what people pay you um, for, 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 I'm talking about what, um, I'm talking about what people make isn't as important, right? Um, what people bring to the table is important in a well-rounded sense. You're not focusing on the singularities because it's a full damn cup is what I'm talking about. It's like, it's not that money doesn't matter. It's not that what people earn doesn't matter. It's not that what people do emotionally doesn't matter. It's that they matter in the context of everything that they're bringing to the table, right? Um, so keep that in mind, right? It's, it's in the context of everything. And um, when these people come into your life, um, pause, evaluate, observe, let them do what they're going to do. Let them do what they're going to do. You'll be able to discern the differences between um, the messages and the partnerships and the collaborations and the people that are going to um, continue to be five of wands and the ones that won't. Um, I think that with the Empress and the Queen of Pentacles here, it's sort of just highlighting. It's almost like they act like a highlight to the, the things that matter most, a highlight to the relationships that are going to matter most and the ways that you're going to enter into them that are going to matter most. So uh, that's for a Libra. Whew. Uh, Libra. No, that's, <laughs> I was looking at the justice card when I said that. Good Lord. Justice is Libra. <laughs> that's for a Scorpio who perhaps has Libra placements, but, um, <sighs> oh, neurodivergence. Uh, spirit, can you please give me some, and this is the, uh, <laughs> give me some spirit. <laughs> um, this is the Miracles Now deck by Gabby Bernstein. Spirit, can you please give me an affirmation to send my wonderful Scorpios forward into April in their highest good and an understanding and knowing of their energy. When I respect my money, my money respects me. That is big Empress energy. <laughs> that is Empress energy and a half, right? And respecting your money is also just respecting the investment that you bring to the table. When you show respect for that, you will find it's not that things start showing up that are magically different in their measure and degree of investment in you, in your ideas, in that beautiful heart of yours. No, it's that you're aligning to something different, right? Like, it's like, if you're afraid of mice, you're not going to be afraid of birds. If <laughs> that's probably the most random analogy ever, but if mice represent, for example, like small offers of worth and value where people recognize your worth and they don't want you to hide, right? They encourage you to stand in the light with them, right? They encourage you to grow because they're not intimidated by growth. Um, they encourage conversation and communication because they're not afraid of those things. Uh, you will not be attracted by those that do, not because you're just like, you won't attract them the same because they just won't resonate. It won't be like, ugh, I, this is in my life again. You'll be like, no, thank you. Like, I, no, no thanks, right? So it just won't, you won't do it. And there won't be a charge to it and there won't need to be a charge because you're not needing to prove something about the pattern that you've been in. That it's like, this is the wrong thing for sure and I need to talk about it and do all these things about it because I'm really uncertain, but I don't want to say it, right? And that's the energy that we can sometimes embody. I let go and allow the universe to do her thing. Hell yeah. That's high priestess energy. Divine timing. I feel like April is going to be a big month for you in terms of business, Scorpio, because um, I think that all of this stuff, it's not just going to help you to move projects forward, but this is also going to make you a, a really good boss to someone. This is going to make you a really good boss to a group of people because you've gone through all of this stuff. You've gone through this journey. You've taken these steps. And these are the same steps that someone else is going to walk in that you're going to be able to then teach them about, right? You're going to be the boss sitting at the boardroom table. Uh, if you're into corporate, I'm not uh, really. So you could be, you know, sitting at these, these tables and saying, hey, this is X, Y, and Z thing. And this is what that means for me. And, you know, I've been there too. Uh, if someone says, I don't really feel confident, I don't know, you can see and smell that bullshit from a mile away. So you'll be able to say to that person, you know what, I respect that you might be afraid, uh, but I'm just going to put it out there and I call bullshit on that. I call bullshit because you do know. If you didn't know, it wouldn't be something that's in, of interest to you. And if you don't know, are you going to let the lack of knowledge, which is so Googleable now, be what steps in the way and gets in the way of you doing what you want to do? 
you will get to have that conversation with somebody else. That is real. That's, that's, that is real emperor energy. And you're showing up in that position twice, not once, but twice. And for this to be the way that we conclude the, the row about fears, that means that you're not only entering the month in this energy, you're going to be leaving the month in this energy. Thank you for coming to my motivational TED talk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, so spirit, can I get some notes from the universe? This is the notes from the universe on love and connection deck by Mike Dooley. Spirit, can I get some notes from, from you, from you for my wonderful Scorpio, just to round out this reading and to remind them of their strength, to remind them of their Leo, to remind them of the value that they bring to the table. Thank you so much, spirit. Love doesn't have to mean near. Interesting. I'll read that in a minute. I'm going to pull this next one here. <laughs> I'm not going to say this card because it's just not going to go well with the way my voice is squeaking. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> you can read it in your head. You can fill in the blanks. Yeehaw. <laughs> when it comes to choosing who will be in your life, I recommend valuing their yeehaw quality above all others. <laughs> can you imagine? There's a caption for you. <laughs> lean into the yeehaw in others Jeez. okay um <clears throat> i recommend valuing their yeehaw quality above all others have it your way special orders don't upset us the universe <laughs> oh spirit so love doesn't have to mean near i just this is like this is the most excellent energy Right. Like to me, I would often say uh, I would often say before, you know, if it doesn't mean if it's not a hell yes, I don't want to do it. And if it's not a hell yes, why am I doing it? And if it's not a hell yes uh, and I don't need to do it and I have no real clear reason for why I'm doing it, don't do it. Right. So that's like almost the that's like the yeehaw mentality. Um, hilarious. That's hilarious. It's almost like um, like a cowboy version of the dude is what I'm getting in this like tie dye too. Ah, good times. So it's like, it's really valuing the passion in other people is what I'm getting, right? Um, look for the, look to the king of wands people in your life, the queen of wands people in your life, the most passionate people in the room. Surround yourself with them for, you know, tap into that wisdom um, as you go through this, the, as you go through April, watch how they move, watch what they're interested in and how they expand and what makes them light up and get like, a, you know, get all ranty and ravey in the best kind of way, right? Watch how they expand. There's so much to be learned from that. Why? Because um, I, I find that the, the, the King of Wands and the King of Swords or King of Swords, I mean, clarity too, King of Wands and Queen of Wands people in our lives are such great teachers about how to move through uncertainty um, and, and that it's just to me, like I, I have so many of them, um, and they often remind me who is, uh, largely air and, you know, fire, but mostly like air, uh, air in my sun, moon and rising. So prominent air, um, uh, I can sometimes get stuck in my head. So these, these King and Queen of Wands folks pull me out of my head and back into my heart. And that's such a beautiful place to be, even if it's just a reminder of the ways that it feels when I dwell there, right? That's something else to keep in mind too. Um, so this too, love doesn't have to mean near. And what I'm getting off of this is that the outcome doesn't have to be right in front of you for it to matter. The outcome doesn't have to be right in front of you for it to, um, you know, be something that you love, right? When I started this channel, I was like, Ooh, I don't know. I'm stuck in my head. I don't know if I can read tarot. I'm like a policy person. Mm, I don't know. And then like, I found it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and as I got through, as I stepped through, all of these different things to get to this point. Um, my love for this does not have to mean that the end goal of posting that first video or, you know, having a community that I build around this, it th that doesn't have to be right next to me for it to be something that I, I love. I, like I can still love it and, and that can be a goal. It doesn't have to be like right here, right? It doesn't have to be right here. It's something that I can reach for. And I think that this is important. Love doesn't have to mean near. Um, some are better loved at a distance for a while anyway, and that's okay. Why? Because you're working towards stuff. You're working towards stuff. The emperor doesn't doubt that something is coming because the emperor knows their shit. The empress is here too. The empress, same energy, 
doesn't need to, right? They're both here. This is divine counterpart. So it could be something to do with a relationship for some people, but they don't doubt whether it's coming because they know, right? They know. And there's, uh, I had the three of wands here as well. Two of wands, sorry. Um, two of wands. So it's like, keep your eyes on the horizon, um, but don't forget that the prize, just because it's not with you right now, doesn't mean it's not coming. And that prize is going to change. It's okay if the prize changes. Don't change the goalposts on other people. That's the key in doing any kind of creative project like this or any kind of work like this. Don't change the goalposts on other people, but let the prize change for you if you need it to. <sighs> like I said, thank you for coming to my motivational TED Talk, Scorpio. <laughs> oh, sorry, my chair just clicked. Um, but this is your uh, oh, monthly creative energy forecast. I feel fired up for you. I The fire in my chart gets all like worked up when I, you know, hear about people getting stuck in their head because I know it's a pattern that I do. So I get like almost defensive on your behalf. Like I want to and like want to be your running buddy and be like, pull your pull your head out of there. Pull your head out of your head. Um, that I mean, I'm sure that some people heard that and they were like, oh, where are they going with this? Pull your head out of what? Your head. Pull your mind out of your mind. Um, so I just get fired up and I'm like, Grr! it just, no, believe in yourself. Don't doubt yourself. Take another wheat grass shot. <laughs> so on that note, this was your April monthly creative energy forecast for April, 2022, my wonderful Scorpio. And I wish you a wonderful month and I look forward to seeing you also. Uh, if, if this resonated for you, feel free to like, and subscribe. It helps to connect our energy together. And it also helps me to grow this channel and continue to expand on what I love doing, which is tarot, which is this uh, which is channeling, which is um, all things related to what's happening here. So um, on that note, there are plenty of other ways to connect with me throughout the month. But in the meantime, have a wonderful April. Take care, Scorpio.